Hey what's up guys welcome to my first ever networking tutorial today I'm gonna show you how to do a basic zero touch provisioning for an Arista switch in EVNG formerly known as unit lab and using an external Linux VM for my ZTP server so what is ZTP and how does it work to be honest it might seem like a pain in the ass at first but I assure you that it can make your life as a network engineer a lot easier especially if you're tasked to build DCs, POCs or if you just deal with any number of devices in general so have you ever installed a new switch out of the box probably you did and you were sitting in the cold aisles of a DC with the console cable in your hand waiting for it to boot up and set up basic config on the switch like management IP, hostname, some passwords so later on you could just connect to it remotely now this is fun for the first couple of times but it's time consuming and the situation get frosty not to mention the, the noise that is generated by sounds of equipment there's no need to fear, ZTP to the rescue. When an Arista switch boots up, if it has no startup config, it configures all interfaces as routed ports, so no switch port, and sends out DCP queries on all interfaces, including the management interface, all interfaces that are active. Yeah. So and it will keep sending out DHCP queries until it receives a response or you cancel or disable ZTP as you can see on my screen now the switch is in ZTP mode and it's attempting to send out DHCP queries but because my ZTP server is not configured yet it's not successful so how to uh, move forward with this one. At first, when you boot your switch up, it will tell you something like this. I mean, it will tell you exactly this. The device is in ZTP mode and is attempting to download the startup config from a remote system. Uh, yeah, and then the device will not be fully functional until either a valid startup config is downloaded from a remote system or ZTP is cancelled. I can show you how to cancel it. So, If you log into the switch and go for privileged exec mode to zero touch cancel it will automatically reload the switch. But the problem with this one is that it will cancel ZTP only for this time because if you reboot the machine and it doesn't have any startup config on it then it will cry and try to connect to the ZTP server I mean it will try to send out the HCP queries again until you can you have a connectivity to your ZTP server and it can provide the switch uh, script or startup config. To permanently disable ZTP you can use the zero touch disable command and this would mean that the next time if you restart the switch it will not enter ZTP mode again. So let's wait until the switch boots and see how it goes and how to disable it and how to re-enable it again so I'm gonna stop the rec and we're back so now that we have cancelled ZTP we can configure our switch and let's just configure hostname if one but now if you don't save the config do a reload you will see that ZTP the switch will be in ZTP mode again so I'm gonna fast forward until the switch boots and the switch is back online as you can see it's again in ZTP mode so let's disable ZTP shall we alright zero touch disable 
this will restart the switch again. Sorry guys. I will fast forward to the reboot. And we're back and we can see that the switch is not in ZTP mode anymore. So let's re-enable it and boot up the switch using ZTP. So how can we re-enable it? We cannot use zero touch enable command because there is no no such command. But we can do well actually we could use the full recover command from a boot, but we're not going to do that. Or uh when you disable ZTP, there will be a file created in Flash called Zero Touch Config. We can take a look. What does it contain? Sorry. So as you can see, it contains one line: disable equal true. If we change this line to equal false, or if we just simply delete it or if we just simply delete the file it will re-enable ZTP so let's delete the startup config yep and do a reload nope and we're back in ZTP mode so as we can see the switch is trying to send out the ACP queries on all of the interfaces. So let's set up our ZTP server but first let me explain what this cloud means here. So because I use an external virtual machine I have to make sure that my switch can connect to that VNet. In order to connect to that VNet we can use a cloud network which you can add a new network and select the cloud. Now how do I know which cloud? I will go to my EVE server and here you can see I have a bunch of interfaces but I mainly have two uh, network adapters set up from VMware which I can show you from here now settings as you can see I have one for NAT to connect my VM to the internet and one custom VM NAT host only network and my ZTP server which is dev1 but you can use Fedora or Ubuntu or any other Linux distro I guess uh, I tested it on Fedora and Ubuntu 16 and it just worked perfectly fine so here I have the same VNet on my second network adapter so in my EVE network how do I know which one is which cloud and I can see that so the PNets are the cloud networks the first one is my NAT network so that's not it and the second one PNet1 is my uh, VNet for the management which I will use in my tutorial and so the 10.23.42 network which as you can see I have the same on the Linux machine so here I added a cloud network cl cloud 1 which I connected to the management interface of of the Arista box. So let's set up our ZTP server. First we need uh, the ACP server. You can use a DACP server on Linux or on Windows as well. On Windows it's pretty straightforward. It's You just have to install the DACP server and create a scope and uh, just select option 67 and specify your bootstrap file where it is located so we install the ACPD it cannot start of course we don't have any config uh, but let's configure it 
using actually let's use nano for this time etc dacp dacpd dot conf and actually I have my example I will just copy paste it here so I have my subnets my net mask the range my default gateway DNS server domain name and where my uh, boot file name is located which is this server and using 8080 okay let's save it um, now let's start the ACP server service ISC DACP server start okay it's now started I should open this and now there are three ways to install ZTP you can use Packer you can use GitHub or you can use Python pip in my example I would choose Python pip but for example on Ubuntu 17 I had some issues and uh, it was easier to use GitHub so here just do pip install ZTP server by the way if you don't have pip installed you can just do it by apt get install python pip okay so now ZTP is installed now first we have to change our ZTP server conf which is located in etc ZTP server ZTP server dot conf here I will change the identifier to system mac because EOS, uh, virtual EOS, VOS doesn't have any serial number so you have to use the MAC address here we can just change it to our IP address um, let's see here as well 200 port is fine save it okay and now let's go and create the startup config for our switch uh, we can already see that DACP is working but uh, the switch couldn't download the bootstrap file because the startup config is it uh, just doesn't exist yet and we have to go to user share ZTP server this will be our main working area uh, you will see in my next tutorial that we will main we will probably use all of these folders and we'll modify a lot of things but for this basic setup we will just create a startup config for this node uh, for this we will need the MAC address of the switch which we can find out from show version really quickly let's do a folder with the MAC addresses name okay let's enter that let's do a startup config file for that and let's edit it I already have it so I will just copy paste it um, uh, and here we are it's just the basic startup config which contains my VRF management and a banner two users and a host name and that's it now let's fire up ZTP and we can do it with ZTPS but I like to use a debug to see if there are any error messages so maybe I skip something so get bootstrap it seems that the switch is starting to download the script 
Okay, it had an issue. Response to do validation. Yeah, 400 actually means that you fucked up something. And I actually know what I commit and failed to do. So let's control C. And actually, I forgot to disable topology validation. Uh, sorry. And I know. And disable topology validation. I will change it to true. Save. ZTPS minus minus debug. And now the switch should download the script. TCP response received on management one. Executing downloaded config and script, rebooting the system. Yeah, so basically the switch when it can download the startup config file, it will reboot and it will boot with the correct config. So I'll fast forward. And now we're back and as we can see the switch has booted with my startup config that it has downloaded from the ZTP server which is cool. So uh, this was a really simple setup guys but in my next video I'm going to show you a bit more complicated stuff and actually there's a I can show you a sneak peek from my lab from my next lab which looks like this hold on let's stop this Closed lab and this one. So, in my next section, I'm going to show you how to build out this whole network with automation. So, I won't use uh, the startup config example, what I showed you now. I will I will use variables and configlets and templates you will see it's going to be awesome so until next time see you guys I hope you enjoyed it